All right. Whoa, that one's not safe for work. All right. Uh, let's get going here. What's next? A pay per view, I suppose. I'm not playing uh, Hitler versus uh, Darth Vader yet. Okay. You know what? You talk about. The, uh, I missed the first two matches of the pay per view. Actually, in fact, I first I missed the first three matches of the pay per view, so I can't talk about them. Mm. What do we do? Why they shut down Mercer? I, I just to fuck with me. It may have been actually a deliberate move to fuck with you. Uh, they, they, there are of course fifty-two weekends a year. They could have shut that thing down. They chose to do it the one weekend you went into Seattle. Yeah, the, the it's the biggest exit. Everyone, if you've never driven into Seattle, it's the uh, biggest exit. In it's the, the exit leads leads right to the building. It goes right to the building. It's uh, far and away the easiest way to get there from the north, and probably the easiest way to get there from the south. It's a very popular exit, and yes, they closed it just for this weekend. Our uh, truth and Rey Mysterio was the opener. Our truth was uh, awesome in this match, M- mostly the 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 pre and post match. Our truth can talk. Not sure if anyone's noticed that yet. True. I've been trying to to put over his talking skills for a long time now. But he talked and was awesome, and then he wrestled and was pretty good, and then he won clean as a sheet. Clean as a sheet. How many times did Miz win clean as a sheet in the last six months? Three. I don't think ever. He won three. He had a win over Daniel Bryan. He had the win over John Morrison, and he had the win over Jerry Lawler. Anything I'm forgetting anybody? I I didn't think so. But yes, R-Truth can uh, beat Rey Mysterio clean in the opener. So he beat him, and then he uh, broke the uh, water bottle over Rey's head, and the people hated the truth. This was a great crowd (laughs) here in Seattle. They were. Although it was a small crowd. I would say 8,500 or so. Uh, They had, like, a third of the building was tarped off with Titan Tron, and then the entire upper deck was tarped off. Far, far fewer people than were here for UFC. Uh, I would not say the entire upper deck. Most of it. There was a, a good check section of it tarped off. Although, the section that was not tarped off was full. So, they sold what was available. 9,000. Not a, not, a, not a person more. But it was a good crowd. They were in uh, most everything. There were a couple of matches they didn't care about. Wade Barrett, Ezekiel Jackson. This was where uh, Ezekiel, I saw at least for the first time, the I think it was four or five straight body slams. And he did a slam, and everyone went, yay. And he did another slam, and they went, yay. And he did a third slam, and they went, yay. And they did a fourth slam, and they were like, yeah, woo. And I was like, Jesus Christ, this fucking guy's getting over doing body slams. That is the exact opposite of what happened on SmackDown, by the way. Really? Yes. He tagged in for, I think part of it, instead of a comeback, it was a hot tag. So you're expecting fast action. And he comes in and hits one body slam, and the action slows. Hits another body slam, and nothing else happens. Hits a third body slam, and people are like, wow, you dragged this down. That's amazing, because they got more into each body slam as he went on. And uh, by the last body slam, I was hoping he'd body slam him 25 times, see if he could bring the whole building down. So everybody loved that, and then the geeks ran in for the DQ, and it was bullshit. And yeah, I actually got here, and I got to the building in the middle of this match. So you only missed two matches. Uh, oh, I missed the dark match. No, oh, I missed that one, too. Okay. But, uh, yes, I uh, got there. And Daniel Bryan beat Drew McIntyre in a loser-gets-divorced match. <laughs> that would be an awesome step. May have been. I, or, depending on this is wrestling, a lot of guys may be the winner gets divorced. Well, that didn't happen here. No. So, yeah, it's like I, I got in the building in the middle of that the, the Ezekiel match and actually took my seat as the beatdown was going on at the end. So that's where I got here. And I was very... Very, very happy to see when the next match came out. I was not too late to see Sin Cara. Yeah. I saw I'm him luckily have for you. his worst match in years. It was no good. It was, yes. They, they did not uh, gel. They were not on the same page. The only thing I can say about this is that the, the of all the spots, and they fucked up several spots, but the finish was fucked up worst of all. They didn't bother trying to save it. Sin Cara just pinned him. They just stopped wrestling. Oh, and by the way, I can I can uh, confirm in a shocking scoop, they were attempting La Mystica. Mm. Yeah. Didn't work. No. <laughs> no. But uh, yes, they... It's a La Pistica. Because <laughs> it was like piss. It was shit. <laughs> Wouldn't it be La Shitica? That's not as funny. I apologize. It was La but... Mystica and that he fucking missed by a mile. How about that one? I see. The, the, ah, yes, I understand now. I had to think about that one for a second. Point being, he hit this horrible, horrible botched move, 
and they count of three, and the ref raises his hand, and the camera zooms in, and there is Sin Cara's mask on the giant Titan Tron, and he's just shaking his head. Yeah. He knew this match sucked. You know what's funny? I know I mentioned this on Sunday, how stupid it was that Daniel Bryan is wrestling him on SmackDown and Chavo is wrestling him on pay-per-view. And uh, I'm not going to do the same rant again, but I'm going to add something to that rant. Do you know that they have been doing this same match on, on the house shows and it's been no good? Chavo and Sankara? Yeah. Hmm. But they still had to do it on pay-per-view. And it was no good. It was no good. Th- this was, yes, we, in fact... I'm, you know, I don't care if, if people make mistakes... As long as when you make the mistake, you learn a lesson, and then you don't make the mistake again. You know? That's that's why I get so angry at TNA. They do the same shit over and over, week after week, and they never learn anything from their mistakes. They never even learn anything from their successes. They just keep making mistakes over and over again for nine fucking years. You know, if you make a mistake, and, and there's strong evidence it was a mistake, and you get evidence all the time in the form of buy rates, ratings... Crowd reactions, the list goes on and on. As long as you make that mistake and you go, huh, that failed. I'm not going to do that again. Great! But if you do the fucking match on the house show tour and the match is horrible every night, then maybe you don't want to do that match on pay per view live. Maybe, maybe if you have to do it, you do it on SmackDown, for example, where you can tape it and edit it and do the fucking La Mystica again the right way. Very frustrating. This was, uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's only wrestled three or four times for WWE, but they've all been way better than this. The Tyson Kidd match, the Daniel Bryan match. He had one on Raw. Do you, remember, when he, even on Raw, when he fell off the top rope. He just climbed back up and did it right. Still way better than this. Yeah. Things turned around. Alberto came out. <laughs> I like how you write, the post-match video package didn't even show the finish. A fail. Why would you want to see the finish again? Well, that that's... That demonstrates how badly the finish was botched. Mm. Usually they will try something to save it, but no, they just showed him do his mini tramp entrance, uh, a Rana or two, and they just then showed him like putting his fist in the air. That I was, was a victory. <laughs> that means they learned from the failure. I guess so. Yes. I was sitting next to a Mexican family. They had a Mexican flag. They did not give a shit about Sin Cara and Chavo. I presume they were in a ray. I, I was not there then. But then when Alberto came out, they were happy. This was their hero. You know? And you know he's my hero, too. You know, when they talked about bringing in Mystico, I was like, yeah, you know, he's a big star in Mexico and all that sort of thing, but he can't work American style and he can't speak the language. You know, if they want a, if they want a, a high-flying masked fella, why didn't they just put, uh, and they talked about this for, for a brief period, put a uh, low-key under a mask. He can work the style. He's small. He's, you know... He can be your, your anti-Ray, if that's what you want. But they brought in Mystico. But anyway, the point is, I wonder if the reason that, that the uh, the Mexican family next to you didn't get into Sin Cara, um, I was sitting next to my wife, and when he came out, her, her first question was, is he a real Mexican? Mm. And I said, yes, in fact, he is. And if you're just your average person watching the show, and and you're unaware, let, let's say this Mexican family doesn't actually follow Lucha. Right. I mean, how would you know that that Mystico is, in fact, a real Mexican? I don't know. He's never cut a promo in Spanish. No. I mean, it's patently obvious that uh, Hernandez is not like, uh, you know, her- Hernandez in Spanish is is moderate at best. So, so you know, your 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 average Mexican family isn't really going to get all that behind Hernandez because it's clear he's, you know, he's not a... a he's a phony. I don't want to say that because I'm a fake Mexican, too. Yes, you are. But, um... You know, it, I think Mystico needs to go out there and, and cut a promo in Spanish or something. You know, maybe just once so that the Mexican family knows, hey, here's a real Mexican. We can actually get behind him. It's not low key under a mask, for example. Could be. Could be. Although if they did that, it would still be far, far short of the greatness of Alberto Del Rio. Well, it's patently clear Alberto Del Rio is a Mexican. A it's Mexican. patently clear he's awesome. Yeah. He came out here. He talked about the immigration problem with Canadians coming down to steal jobs which all the Americans are happy with, all the Canadians booed. And then he kind of he started talking about how everyone in Seattle was miserable because all they do is hang out in coffee shops and, and complain about the weather. And Dave, in his report, put a line about no, no one laughed at this. The reason no one laughed at this is because we were all nodding in agreement. Yes. That is what actually happens here, everyone. We go to coffee shops, and we complain about the shitty weather. 
<laughs> that's what life is actually like here. Yeah, that's not an exaggeration no. at all. Everyone, th- th- it's not the problem we didn't get over. It's that it wasn't funny to us. It was the truth. It was the sad truth. It was the sad truth. So he tried to make fun of us, but we disagreed and with him. And why would we boo Alberto? It's not his fault the weather sh- is shitty. I don't know. He talked about how he would make uh, either Cena or Miz tap out to his cross arm breaker. They would be screaming, no mas, Alberto, no mas. He was fantastic. And then eventually Big Show and uh, Kane came down and interrupted. And Kane was sad that the rapture did not come. <laughs> that made me laugh. And they told him to leave before they kicked his ass, and he fell, he left. Then we had Big Show and Kane versus CM Punk and Mason Ryan. Would you like to talk about CM Punk? How awesome he was? I actually missed a good chunk of this match. So How the hell did you miss this match? I uh, My girlfriend, who the, the tickets were in her name, she still refused to go unless I offered to buy her all the beer she could drink. Mm. I was doing a beer run. I see. Yeah. CM Punk was the best man of all time in this match. I believe you. He took a match that was shitty, and he made the match great. <laughs> that's, that's always an accomplishment. Not greater than two and a quarter stars, but great nonetheless. I, I did catch the bit where I, I, I heard the uh, the Big Show chest slap, and then I saw the part where he went for another one, but Punk turned his back, and so she'll give him the back slap instead. Yeah. A great spot. Old school. Yeah. And uh, it, I, I, I didn't see much of this match. I can tell from the crowd reaction. It was better than, for example, Sin Cara and Chavo, and better than the women's match that followed. Fans were into this match. It was a perf- it seemed to be a perfectly fine tag team match. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the end, uh, Mason Ryan ended, ended up eating the double choke slam for the clean pin. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I cannot give it a detailed review, but it seemed like a thumbs up. Brie Belly and Kelly. A thumbs down. Yeah. They've been doing the build to karma run-ins in every women's segment for months now. So uh, people know when the women come out, it's just to just to kill time until karma arrives. There were chants for karma. I saw karma signs. What they got was a bad wrestling match with a fuck finish. The heels that nobody cares about won. And then there was no karma. No. Robbery. Randy Orton defeated Christian in a great fucking match. By the way, I found out why Kelly Kelly's name is Kelly Kelly. Why she has two first names. What would that be? They thought it was funny. That's that's it. That's the whole answer. I thought that was okay. I mean, that's what I that's what I would have guessed from the first time she showed up. Somebody came up with the name Kelly, and they thought it would be funny if her last name was also Kelly. Mm-hmm. And did you know that there was talk for a while of uh, bringing up a uh, developmental guy, and he would have been her brother Kyle Kelly. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Never happened. Is that any worse than Kelly Kelly? Well, no, I'm just... She's over, she's over for, you know... Lady they could have called him Kelly Kelly, too. That's a guy's name, Kelly. Absolutely. Yeah, had Kelly Kelly and his sister Kelly Kelly. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> Why? They could have been from Cali. Oh, God. <laughs> I just remember when TNA had about 19 guys named Chris. Yeah. That sucked. What did not suck was Randy Orton versus Christian for the world title. God, this was awesome. Mm-hmm. A great match. And we talked about how uh, this was a great crowd who was into things like Zeke body slamming people, and they even cheered when, Myst- uh, when Mystico got the win after his fucked up finish. So they were into this match and everything, and I was watching it, and I was like, this is good, but I think this may, be, this may not be a great match. This may be a good match in front of a great crowd. And then they did the spot where they teased Christian doing the uh, sunset flip into the RKO, which was the finish last time. And this time they worked it into a spot where Christian went for the, went for the sunset flip and hit it. And uh, the crowd bought this as a near fall in 2011 on pay-per-view. A <laughs> sunset flip. They believed Christian was going to win the world title with a sunset flip. Mm-hmm. Think about how absurd that would have been if it had been the finish. But they believed it. Yeah. And that's when I said, this is a great fucking match right here. And uh, it only got better from there. They did all their stuff. They exchanged near falls. And finally, uh, Randy hit the RKO for the clean win. Just awesome professional wrestling here. Um, I can't uh, I can't say enough good things about this. Just awesome. Um, Great sports entertainment. Everybody. This was quality, quality, quality stuff. The uh, crowd was split. Although I couldn't... It, it, the, 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 the people cheering for... Orton got a superstar reaction. Christian got a we-think-you're-a-cool-guy reaction. Mm. Uh, I, I thought Orton's reaction was much louder. 
I uh, I don't know. I, I think it all depends on where you are in the arena. That could be. Because uh, I know for sure that where I was, um, Orton was a star. Christian was a star. Maybe Orton's cheers were a little louder, but his boos were also a little louder when people booed him. Uh, the only two guys that were megastars were like, when their music hit, everybody around me just was on their feet, was Bret Hart, who was by far number one. Yes. And John Cena was number two. I would agree with that. And, uh, you know, when Orton came out, it was like, you know, if there were 100 people in my area, 50 stood up, 50 just sat there. But when Bret Hart came out, not only did all 100 people get up, but they, they leaped up. They leaped out of their seats high into the air. It was it was amazing. Those men were mega stars. Orton was a star. True. Which was funny, because last time they were in Seattle, Orton and Cena were neck and neck. And uh, not neck and neck right now. No, but I, I, I don't care, because this was so awesome. So, thanks guys for this. Jerry Lawler beat Michael Cole in the, uh, the final blow-off to this, the worst feud of the year. Right, it's been pretty bad. Unless, uh, uh, I thought this was perfect, wait, though. Wait, does K- does uh, Edge and Kane still count? Does that still qualify? I think that was still this part this that, year. That may have been worse. That was worse than this. This sucked. Uh, the the feud. This match was it was what it needed to be. It's what WrestleMania needed to be. It took them all year to figure this out. Jerry Lawler beat up Michael Cole. Cole like threw him in the stairs just long enough to take off his shoes and sock and show his diseased foot. Then Jerry Lawler beat him up more and won. They uh, brought Eve out to get revenge for all the divas. They brought Jim Ross out to get revenge for himself. They brought Brett out just so everyone would cheer for him. <laughs> and uh, just because they had the, the other Kiss My Foot match 15 years ago, they had Cole get put in the sharpshooter, humiliated, covered in barbecue sauce, moonsaulted, and he had Jerry Lawler's foot in his mouth. The storyline ended here. Mm-hmm. Great. Fine stuff. Yes. And then we had John Cena versus Miz in an I Quit match. I was just... There's a lot to hate here. <laughs> I, for the first time, the because uh, you always see guys, the heels especially, uh, in an ODQ match, you'll see someone running at the end. I always wonder why you don't just run at the beginning of an ODQ. They finally did that here. That was good. But then before Miz and Cena even touched, and even before Riley got involved... They squared off, the bell rang, then Miz grabbed the mic. And within like 10 words, he said, I quit. I was screaming, he said it! Ring the bell! The match is over! That pissed me off. Yeah. Then later he did it again when he was talking to the kid in the front row. But the story, as I'm sure you all know, it was just a handicap match. Riley interfered liberally. No one came out to save Cena. Everyone hates him. They beat him up for a long time. Then eventually he cut them off and won in a minute. Yeah. I was... I don't know. I don't even know how to rate this. I didn't I didn't give a star rating. People were asking, what was the rating? I don't know. I don't even know what the hell this was. It was... If, if, if the idea was, okay, kill the Miz, then I'd say three-star match. <laughs> if the idea was uh, protect Miz, um, you know, make him still a viable contender and an upper mid-carder... I'd say minus three stars. Uh, if it was get John Cena over as Superman, I'd say four stars. If it was uh, make uh, the fans believe that John Cena can be beaten at some point in the 21st century, I'd give it a dud. So I don't really know what the fuck to rate this match. Yeah. Um, it I, was... I I, I, uh, I I I don't even know. I can tell you a large chunk of the fans, just, they only came to see John Cena win, and in the end he did, so they were happy. I had I had tons of people in my section who were so fucking bored. Like every time Miz starts droning on, I have got a stick. <laughs> I am going to drive this stick into your sternum repeatedly until you say I quit. And there's people behind me going, boring. It just I don't know. It was not great. I, I I was I don't know. Yeah, it was. Uh... Live in the section I was in, it was not a disaster, but uh, I don't think anyone was going to write a letter about it or anything. I think it was just what it was. The show was over and everyone left. Didn't write a letter. They fell asleep with the pen in their hand. Yeah, this was not the uh, best main event I ever saw. It was not the best paper you ever saw. It was a fun show live. I'm, I'm certain it was better live than on TV. You know, 
I, I swear to God, I'm not going to do a long misrant, but I've just got to say this. This match did a good job to try to convince people that John Cena is a tough guy. Because he took a fucking ass whipping with that, that kendo stick. He had welts all over his, his stomach. And Miz hit him hard with that stick. Yes, he did. Alex Riley fucked up and nearly killed him with the steps. Alex Riley nearly killed him with that fucking briefcase. They they hit him with hard chair shots. Miz strapped the shit out of him. And, you know, Cena took it all. So when the match was over, you know, you could believe that, okay, you know, John Cena ain't the best worker in the world, but you know that's that he's kind of a tough fucking guy. <laughs> he took a he took a beating here. You know, they could have done the same thing with the Miz, you know? Mm-hmm. John Cena could have whipped the shit out of him and and beat the crap out of him. You know, it's like what they did with Randy Orton at one time. Now I don't listen. There are other ways to do this besides having a guy take a fucking bump in thumbtacks, okay? But Randy Orton took a bump in thumbtacks. Why? Because it was it was one of those things they do every now and then to convince the fans that you know what this guy's gimmick may be that he's kind of a pretty boy. You know he's got a, he's got his wacky haircut and he's got his tan and he's he's got abs and that sort of thing. But you know what? This fucking guy's tough. All right, you in the front row, are you gonna take a bump into some thumbtacks? Probably not, unless you're an idiot. Okay, but this guy took a bump into thumbtacks here and uh, and he kept going. That's a tough guy. And every now and then they do that with guys. You know, they've done it with Cena before in, like, the JBL match, and they've, they've done it with various guys where you do something where it's pretty clear that the fans know this guy's tough. They could have done that with The Miz. Miz would have taken some straps. Miz would have taken some kendo stick shots. Miz would have taken some chair shots to the back. You know, nothing's going to hurt a guy or cripple him or anything like that. But it takes a tough guy to get whipped with a strap repeatedly. I've been hit with a kendo stick one time. By uh, Tim Flowers' uh, goofy manager. Remember that say, guy? I was hit several times by Tim, and that was okay. God damn, that guy would hit me with that stick. When Tim's manager hit me. Jesus, that sucked. Plus, the other thing is, when Tim Flowers hits you, no matter how hard he hits you, you know at some point in the past, he was hit even harder. Yeah. When Tim's boss from Costco <laughs> hits you with a kendo stick <laughs> as hard as he can, that pissed me off. Yeah. So anyway, you know, you can see the welts on, and you know, he's not, he doesn't got serious injuries. There's no injuries to be had by getting hit with a stick. He had flesh wounds. He had, he had some superficial wounds, wounds and that welts. sort of thing, but you can still see it. And, and uh, you know, I think this did a lot for John Cena, this match. Did goddamn nothing for Miz except make him look like the biggest pussy. You know, he ran away like Sheamus ran away that one time. He ran away with his hands up in the air like this. You know, and and prancing away, and then he got put in the move and tapped immediately. I mean, you could not have ruined Miz more in this match, and and you know, he still could have lost. He still they still could have done the same finish. The table still could have been turned. He still could have tapped out. That's all fine. But go back and forth. You know, hold for hold, catch as catch can before you make the guy look like an idiot. Anyway.